This is Emily, Henley, and Sammy, and you're listening to Too Scary Didn't Watch. Hi everyone, welcome to Too Scary Didn't Watch, the horror movie recap podcast for those too scared to watch for themselves. I'm Emily, and I'm too scared to watch scary movies. I'm Henley, and I'm also too scared to watch scary movies. I'm Sammy, and I like watching scary movies, and I like telling Emily and Henley about them. She does it every week. That's the drill. That's the drill. Ooh, and baby. And what is up with us? Um, well, I just want you guys to know that you're my Galentines. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wait, you're my Galentines. Always and forever. Always and forever. The best holiday of the year is Galentine's Day. So <laughs> It's not a silly name at all. <laughs> no, it's good. And we like mm-hmm. it. Um, I don't know. I had yet another incredibly uneventful week. Does anyone anyone have anything interesting huh. that happened to them? I watched the Britney Spears documentary. Oh, damn! I really need to do that. How was it? It is really upsetting. It's very sad, and mm. man, Britney was just so formative in my in my youth. And we mm. did her. She's we important. did her so dirty, and it just really takes you back to the tabloid days of like paparazzi. It like has so much footage of like paparazzi just fucking putting her in all these really unsafe looking situations she's clearly very upset by them all the time it has like an interview with this one paparazzi guy who's like she never told us to leave her alone and the person interview the person interviewing is like what about when she literally said leave me alone there's like footage of her always like she said that all the time and he'd be like he was like yeah, I mean, she said, like, for the day, she didn't mean leave me alone forever. <laughs> like, what? it's so that crazy. Guy is doing some mental gymnastics to justify this to oh himself. My oh, God. he definitely is. Have there been any laws put in place at all around paparazzi? Like, because it feels like th- it should be illegal to harass another human being right. the way that paparazzi. The only one I, th- I think there's a law, at least maybe in some places, about paparazzi photos of children. Like, I don't, mm. I think that's illegal, mm-hmm. but I don't, other than that, I don't know that there are any rules. Right. That makes sense. There should be rules because when you actually see like video footage of people being accosted by paparazzi, it's, ex- I can imagine it being like very traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah, it's very upsetting uh, to watch and the way that all of the like late night talk shows talked about her and made her such a joke, like made me really hate Jay Leno. And oh, I fucking hate Jay Leno. Yeah. Does anyone like Jay Leno? Because what I feel like of shit. he seems like a piece of shit. I just feel like no one actually likes Jay Leno. No one ever did like Jay Leno. <laughs> I think so, too. <laughs> <laughs> no one does. No one did. I will say there's only two th- people that were actually kind and empathetic towards her and it was craig ferguson and michael moore Mm. and it was interesting to talk about how like kind of the rise of social media was kind of the fall of that really intense tabloid time Mm. because you could start to get your celeb info straight from them like they would post their own photos so it wasn't like you had to go buy Mm. a trashy magazine to see what your favorite celebs were up to, you could now just follow them on Instagram or whatever. And I, I never really put that together. I thought that was interesting. Oh, so tabloids like just make less money now. Probably I mean, they're I, not as I successful. Don't, I feel like they're kind of more of a joke now. Like I like TMZ and that shit had like a heyday. Like Perez Hilton. Like there was a time where that was mm. fucking huge, and I'm sure it's still very successful and making money. But I could be wrong. But it seems like it's less so than it was in like the earlier 2000s. Yeah. I feel like our culture has al- also shifted. I mean, we still obviously love celebrity gossip mm-hmm. and we eat it up. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I know all three of us uh, belong, go, what, what, how, how do you say this? Subscribe? <laughs> Follow. Subscribe? Follow? Follow. There's the word. <laughs> There's the word. Um, Follow Dumois. Um, which is yes. kind of like the newest iteration of the tabloid right. of people sending in like their own personal experiences and pictures with celebrities. But I feel like our culture has moved away from where we were with Britney Spears. Like, I feel like you can't get away with like being that horrible to another human being. It was also just like anymore. A, a, an extremely misogynistic time. Certainly misogyny is mm-hmm. still all around, but 
I feel like everyone is a little bit more aware of that that's not acceptable and but man in the in the early 2000s the way people talked about women was so gross and i feel like they talked about that on the bachelor podcast we love game of roses as well a lot like if you watch the earlier seasons of the bachelor it's like we've got the sexiest women in the hot tub (laughs) and like just like tons of shots of their boobs and stuff and like just like ooh, that was like so the time oh, this makes me want to <laughs> die yeah so go watch the doc it'll make you feel very bad mm. okay because <laughs> it's like ugh, bringing up the bachelor things are still so bad it's like it's real it's better th- it's so great that it's not that but then i you know just thinking about how every single woman on the bachelor is like teeny tiny has the exact same right. body like every single one has the exact mm-hmm, same right. body mm-hmm. and like it, it, and they're pitted against each other and the storylines are created to be like they're all catty bitches right. and mm-hmm. it's like subtle but it's still there and i hate it but i keep yeah we're watching complicit it. that's <laughs> the whole thing but you gotta hold them yeah. hold them accountable hold them accountable true emily what's up with you this week I don't know. No, nothing. <laughs> just, just <laughs> nothing. Um, I guess I'll do a little shout out because I didn't even do it on social media, which is so crazy. But speaking of Valentine's Day and Galentine's Day, Valentine's Day is a really special day for me personally because it is the day that I adopted my sweet, sweet Mabel. <gasps> Oh. I've had her for seven years now. That is such a long time. Oh. So she's nine. My sweet, annoying girl. We love Mabel so much. We love her. Oh, we love we her, love her so, so much. much. I love her so much. And she's also so annoying and she's so weird. And she's just like this little bizarro creature that lives with me and has lived with me for so long. And it's just the two of us in this house. And <laughs> and I just love her. She's so precious and dear. And she's been mine for seven whole years. So happy anniversary, Mabel. Uh, listeners should know that, well, first of all, Mabel's literally crawling onto Emily's lap as we speak. <laughs> and while yes. we're recording the podcast, Mabel is constantly in in the screen. We can see her all the time. And she just <laughs> meows incessantly at Emily because she hates she hates that Emily's ignored. paying attention to anything but her. She's literally staring into Emily's face right now as we speak. <laughs> like, she's such she's deep so love. needy. With such, with a look of such intense devotion. Um, but one of the cutest things that Emily has to do in order to literally make her like shut up is Emily will just like hold her like a baby and rock her and like bounce her like she's a newborn. And that's the only way to get Mabel to stop meow, like scream meowing at her. She's very loud mm-hmm. and really gets loud as the podcast goes on because she does not like, she's not even like when I'm done, she like it like comes to me she just doesn't like that my attention is elsewhere right. yeah she is incredibly <laughs> needy and i uh you know in many ways we are the same we have a very similar core desire and um and i love her very she's much she's so cute i fucking love mabel Hen. um i i really i really don't have anything i think the only thing i will say is that i watched tenet uh oh, last okay. night okay and God, that movie makes no fucking sense. And what you I've watched heard. it with your mom? Yeah, I watched it with my mom. Wild. Um, my mom kept going, why would someone make a movie where the point is for you not to understand what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> um, it Even when I was like reading the Wikipedia page, like the plot line, I was like, I still don't understand what this is. I mean, it's partially that it's hard to understand but it's partially that you can't help but feel and and by the way Tenet the new Christopher Nolan action movie if anyone hasn't seen it um that came out like a couple months ago with Rob yeah with with our fate with our favorite Rob it's not even like you don't understand it and it's intriguing it's kind of like you don't understand it and it feels like a parody of a Christopher Nolan film Mm. like it's so yeah outrageous I will say the action sequences are really cool Mm -hmm. but the mood the plot of the movie who cares and who knows you know what I mean (laughs) (laughs) yeah but if but it looks cool it looks cool And Robert Pattinson has great highlights I couldn't shut up about those highlights I'm obsessed with his look in this movie it's wild my mom kept commenting on that too she kept being like Robert Pattinson must 
do his hair before every single shot because it was always like perfectly placed and that and she's right that they do that mm-hmm. <laughs> somebody comes up and fixes his hair before every single shot she's correct she is correct mm-hmm. um anyway that is that's that's all i got you guys i love it i think it's time for us to dive into this movie because we have all been oh waiting God. sammy most of all i'm so fucking pumped mm-hmm. for this week's Ooh. movie um this week's movie is saint maud it came out just this past weekend. Well, it came out in theaters, whatever that means, in January, and then was released on Epics uh, over the week or on February 12th. And I've never watched anything on Epics before. It's uh, no free trial, but it has two months for 99 cents, which is pretty good. Oh, that's pretty cheap. That's pretty good. And uh, it's written and directed by Rose Glass, starring Morpheth Clark and Jennifer Ely and Lily Knight. And boy, oh boy, oh, it's an A24 picture. We love our A24 we horrors. We love our A24. Or A24, anything. A20 horrors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just freaking loved it. Hell. You did? Yeah, yeah, because you were excited about it, but I wasn't sure how the actual viewing went. So you you felt good about it. You I felt good it. about it. Me and Jenna sunk up our viewings, and we like to do texting back and forth as we watch. And there was a lot of, oh no, oh no, oh no, <laughs> <laughs> oh no. That's my favorite thing to say. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, buckle up. Welcome back to Cocktail Hour. You are here. You've made it. It's that time once again. And this week's movie really is a doozy. So I would recommend making yourself a drink. You might even want to make this drink, which is the Saint. For this drink, you will need one and a half ounces of bourbon, three quarter ounce fresh lemon juice, quarter of an ounce ginger simple syrup, half an ounce of Lille Blanc, and half an ounce of pink grapefruit juice. You will shake all ingredients with ice and strain into a chilled coupe glass and garnish with a slice of grapefruit on the rim. Um, Drink up, maybe even drink before you have to listen to the sound effects in this trailer. Spoiler alert, there are some squelches. Anyway, enjoy. Cheers. Uh, no... Trivia, really, on this one. I did some looking, didn't really find anything. It has a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes. Ooh, Damn. Pretty good. 83 on Metacritic and a 6.9 on IMDb. Where the trolls go. That's where the yeah, trolls go. Yeah, why do go. I feel like everything is always 6.9? Is that on purpose? Do the trolls make it 6.9? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, uh, they, they communicate with one another and be like, okay, someone else needs to do seven now. Oh, no, it's two, two, two. Okay, I tried no, six, low, six, low, six. Low. <laughs> I'm not joking. <laughs> um, this was Rose Glass's directorial debut. And mm. I re- I read an interview with her where she just said that it was it was quite a few of the crew's kind of first big movie. And so she just said the energy on set was like very supportive. Everyone was like really excited and really put their heart and soul into it. And um, she was like, I know nobody like cares, but it was just everyone was so nice and I had such a good time. And I, was like, I care. I was like, That's so I nice. care. I care. Does A24 like to um, find new filmmaker? Is that because I feel like is that like their thing or is it, it just does seem like I mean, with Rose Glass and Ari Aster and Robert Eggers, it does seem like they are putting an emphasis on the director in a way that not a lot of studios do, I think. Mm -hmm. And I think that's smart because then obviously any movie that comes out from that next director, you're going to see it. Yeah. Because, yeah, I feel like the trailer for this movie is very is like a rose glass film. And her name is very big, even though nobody knows who she is. But I like that. It's like, remember this name because I do now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. That is. Yeah. It's a good name, too. It's a great name, and she's great. I mean, this is directed super, super well. It's, she's just always so impressed by directors. The vision they have, man, it's Ugh. it's a lot. And the cinematography's great. The music's great. Everything really came together in this film. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. That's, I love to hear it. I love to hear it. <laughs> um, shall we watch the trailer? Ugh. 
God, I've seen this trailer. It's been a long time, and I am not excited. To There's watch a part it again. you're gonna not like. I know yeah, what that I, I know is, what part and I is. don't. I n- even knowing, I'm like, oh no, I don't want to see that again. Well, you have to. But I have to. You have to. You have to. <laughs> oh, the the tangled webs we weave. Okay, <laughs> uh, let's do it. Dear God, your presence graces the air. And soon, everyone will see Hi, you, Maud? Yes, hi. It takes nothing special to mop up after the dying. You're prettier than the last one. But to save a soul, that's quite something. Bless Amanda's body and bless her mind, which is shrouded in darkness. When you pray, do you get a response? Oh. It's like he's physically in me. It's how he guides me. My little savior. Hey, I thought that was you. What are you up to? I'm a private carer. You're still nursing? What? I don't know what happened. All the good girls go to hell. Cause even got herself. I just want to see you loosen up. I've got more important things on my mind. <laughs> There's my little thing. <laughs> Maud, he isn't real. <laughs> Nothing worthwhile comes easily. All the good girls go to hell. <laughs> I turn into ignorance. Don't say I didn't want you. You must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. I'm ready and open. And I feel fuller of your love than ever before. I have a responsibility. Oh, yes, of course. This is life and death on another level. if I'm getting it all wrong. All the good girls go to hell. It's worse no. than I remembered. It was worse than I remembered. <laughs> the sound effect on it is so bad. Oh, the squ- it's a squelch. The squelch. I knew it was going to happen. And I went, I went, okay, don't look, don't look. And then as soon as I did it, I, it happened and there was the squelch and there was nothing <laughs> I could do. Squelch and she's just walking. Oh, <laughs> oh. It's so bad. She's so good in it. More Fifth Clark. She's a little Welsh, little Welsh actress. I just loved her. I mean, oh. she's so fucking creepy, but she's good. Oh, oh, oh my god. god. Oh no. Oh god. <laughs> you guys are pumped. How? Oh no. I, I'm really excited though because I, I, this does look really good. But Jesus. It does look really good. I'm really, this is a perfect film to do this podcast with because I am so curious. Hey, we started it with Midsummer because of this kind of new wave of A24 horror film specifically that you just Mm got to know what happens. You have to know what happens. How can, (laughs) I mean, I have to know and I'm going to be upset. Mm-hmm. I have to note, um, I have a feeling I'm not going to be wanting to go to church after this experience. Probably not. But otherwise, you would have wanted to. Uh, yeah, otherwise, you're really wanting to. Remember how the exorcist sent everyone back to church? Mm. I feel like maybe this isn't going to happen with this right. one. Right. Maybe not. Me. Right. Maybe not. Well, let's find out. <laughs> oh, God. Um, okay. We start on... Uh, we're in kind of a it, what seems to be a hospital room. There is blood dripping onto the floor from somewhere. We can't really see what's happening. It's all in tight close-ups. And then we see um, a woman's face also kind of with blood on it. She looks very shocked, stunned. This is Morpheth Claude, uh, Clark, our um, protagonist, the titular Maud, and... Uh, her, she is in a nurse's uniform. She has surgical gloves on also covered in blood. And then we see the reverse shot, a full wider shot now of a woman dead on uh, a table, like a, like a hospital bed. And Maud is 
kind of crouched in the corner of the hospital room, again, just looking almost like catatonic. She looks up at the ceiling. There's a big cockroach crawling on the ceiling. And we cut to titles Saint Maud. And then we come back up at, uh, we see Maud uh, sometime later in her apartment. It's a little studio apartment. This is set in kind of a, a British seaside town. They filmed it, I think, in Scarborough. Ooh. It's very cute. And she has this little apartment. She is heating up some soup. And then when she sits down to eat, she has, um, does her, her prayer before eating. And she says... Dear God, watch over me as I embark on this next posting. The pain in my stomach persists, and it is now further hampered by menstruation. I have taken two ibuprofen and milk of magnesium. Forgive me of my impatience, but I hope you will reveal your plan for me so soon. I can't shake the feeling that you must have saved me for something greater than this. Not that I'm complaining. Mm. While she's reciting this prayer, we see her kind of getting ready for work, getting into a different uniform, still kind of a nurse-ish uniform, but just a different one, and walking with a suitcase to her new job posting. We come to find that she is she's now like a personal carer uh, doing palliative care, and she gets to her new the the house that she'll be working at and the previous nurse kind of comes out to greet her shows her in and shows her where to put her stuff down she says basically kind of giving her the rundown of um you know you'll be working with amanda she she needs these injections every evening kind of telling her what medication she needs and maud says what does she like and the previous carer says a bit of a cunt have fun. <laughs> <laughs> and then leaves her there. She goes up to her new bedroom in the house and takes her little cross out of her bag, goes and hangs her cross above her dresser. And she looks p pleased to be there, kind of excited about this new job. She goes down to meet Amanda and exams her. Amanda is Jennifer Ely. Uh, with through voiceover, we hear Maud saying, Amanda, 49, stage four lymphoma of the spinal cord. She's t again oh. talking to God. All of her voiceovers are prayers, basically. And she said and she says, I have a feeling you might be seeing her soon. So like her prognosis is not good. And she is getting close to dying. And she says she was a dancer, a choreographer. Uh, minor celebrity, as you know, I have no patience for creative types as they tend to be self-involved. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Mod is all business. <laughs> no nonsense. No nonsense. <laughs> just God. Just God. Wow. And we just see her. She looks like very happy to be in this role. She's kind of going around doing the cooking, um, uh, cleaning and administering the whatever medication she needs. We see that she has she has to bathe her. Amanda is in a, it confined confined to a wheelchair, and so she bathes her, kind of stretches her. We see her kind of going through these daily routines, and then one evening, Amanda is getting dressed up, and Maud comes into the room, and she, Amanda says, "How do I look?" She's got a wig on. She's getting some, you know makeup on and a dress. And Maud is like, "Oh, you look lovely." And I guess Maud has been asked to leave for the evening to give Amanda the house. And as Maud is leaving out, a man walks in and is like, "Hope we're not um, kicking you out." And Maud starts to say, "Like, oh, I was, I'm going to visit a friend." He's like, "Great, bye," and like closes the door, <laughs> closes the door behind her. Um, so we see that. Uh, Amanda is having a gentleman caller and Maud's being booted out for the night. And we see Maud walking around town and she sees a homeless man asking for change and she gives him some change and he says, oh, th thank you. Thank you so much. And she says, may God, may God bless you and never waste your pain. 
And he's like, it what? <laughs> it's in this little British accent. <laughs> <laughs> it what? 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 And, and what was that? And uh, <laughs> she's like, nothing. And walks off and he's kind of laughing at her. He's like, oh yeah, God bless you too. And as she's kind of walking along the, the beach, her phone rings and you just see her answer and say, what? Like, what happened? And she rushes back home and we see that the the guy and Amanda are both pretty drunk. Amanda's kind of slumped down in the couch a bit. Um, they have her old um, dance videos on. Amanda was a, a dancer. And the man says, like, she used to be able to drink me under the table. Like, now she can barely hold it. And Maud's like, yeah, things are different now. And he's like, oh, yes. Like, of course, of course. And he's like, do you need, can I help with anything? And she's like, no, it's fine. Like, just leave. He leaves. Amanda starts throwing up and Maud is left to care for her. And um, after she throws up, Maud is cleaning up the vomit and like scrubbing the carpet. And Amanda is still kind of drunk, sitting on the couch, smoking. And she's like, you should have seen him back in the day. He was always trying to fuck me. Now he has hair plugs. Like, did you see his plugs? And Maud's like, no, I didn't notice. And... um. It's after she's done cleaning, Maud gets Amanda ready for bed. She has to bathe her and gets her in bed. And at her bedside, Amanda asks Maud, like, how long have you been doing this? And she says, just over a year. And Amanda says, what was your job before this? And she says, well, I worked, I think, for the NHS, like a, a hospital for the NHS. And um she says so have you seen a lot of death Maud says yes and she says what made you leave and she says i needed a change i was spread really thin and also it's what god wanted and when when god came to me everything changed and um amanda says oh so this is a this is a recent conversion a newfound faith and she says yes and says sometimes he he talks to me and amanda says oh like you actually hear him and maud explains it's it's like he's in me like i feel him within me like when i'm doing something right it feels warm and everything feels good and that's how he guides me is is it feels good when i'm doing what he wills of me when he's pleased it's like a shiver warm pulsing is Maud very creepy or is she like pretty normal seeming like what's her vibe right now before this conversation because after this conversation i think we know the answer <laughs> <laughs> she's creepy she's i mean she's very serious like very straight faced doesn't mm -hmm. smile a lot or if she does smile it's like a very small little smile and yeah she's she's creepy for sure okay uh, that's what I thought, but I wasn't sure if she was going to like, I wasn't sure if she was seemingly more normal in the beginning or not. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, she's not really. She starts off okay. pretty creepy. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> um, cool. And, cool. <laughs> cool. And so then Amanda starts kind of saying uh, about how she's afraid to die and she th she's thinking a lot about it and she's thinking, you know, where am I going to be when I have my last breath and like then that's it and then nothing again and Maud kind of looks like, ooh, I have something to say here and like comes in she says she's like no, like that's not it. Like there's so much more. I'm like God, God is with you. God will never leave you. He won't let you fall. And Amanda kind of gives a half smile like she appreciates this attempt at comforting her, but it's not really like she like doesn't believe in God clearly. And so she's like basically like, oh, thanks for saying that. That's nice. But uh, in a kind of half like making fun of her way says like, oh, my little my little savior. And Maud's face really lights up and she looks thrilled at this uh, statement Ooh, perhaps not the best <laughs> thing to have said yikes and so she finishes putting her to bed and she's walking back up to her room and the lights start kind of like 
pulsing, like getting dimmer and brighter. She's walking really slowly as if she's like walking through water. She looks ecstatic. She's almost like falling over. And as she's climbing up the stairs, she's like breathing slower. She's like, <sighs> it's like as if she's having an orgasm. And as she's like reaches the top of the stairs, she like collapses and she's like moaning with pleasure like she is feeling God inside of her. Oh, man. This doesn't seem like God to me. This feels like <laughs> Satan. I mean, call me crazy, but... <laughs> You're saying sex is bad? I, I'm just saying that I'd <laughs> yes. be a little worried. I'd be a little worried. Mm. Yes. <laughs> Orgasms are from Satan. Especially when <laughs> women Everyone have them. That. They're bad. Everyone knows that. <laughs> Because they're also not real. they're not real um and so she she finally makes it to her bedroom she opens a a bag of what i think is popcorn kernels pours the kernels onto the floor kneels onto them to pray and says father thank you don't get me wrong palliative care is noble work but i always knew you had something more planned for me cleaning up after the dead Basically, anybody can do that. But to save a soul, that's quite something. Your presence graces the air, and I feel fuller of your love than ever before. More than enough to share. And we see her the following day doing her chores, cleaning, doing dishes, and she just looks like on top of the world. She is on cloud nine. She has found her purpose, and it is saving Mm. the soul of her new patient, Amanda, and uh, I mean, this like kind of euphoric state lasts for a while. There's a she's like doing dishes and she gets her like soapy hands out of the water and starts like rubbing herself. And she's like looking up at the ceiling again, going like, <gasps> like she's really feeling great. She's feeling amped on God, amped on God, high on God, high on God. And she's dumping out um, Amanda's alcohol, bottles of alcohol. And as she's kind of cleaning around the house, there's a knock at the door and it's a younger woman. Um, well, probably in, in, I guess, like Maud's age in 30s. Her name is Carol. And Maud's like, who are you? And she's like, oh, I'm here to see Amanda. Kind of brushes past her, pushes in, goes in Amanda's room, uh, closes the door. And then we cut to Maud in her bathroom, washing her face. She gets a nosebleed and kind of gets hypnotized watching the blood go down the drain. And she can just hear Amanda and Carol like giggling and laughing. And she looks upset by it, either jealous or maybe suspicious that this Carol might be a problem to on her mission to try to get to, to bring Amanda to God. She doesn't look happy. Maud is stressful. She's very stressful. The like the <laughs> dread in this movie, you just like know that it's going to get worse and worse. <laughs> and Ugh. yeah, this is why Jen and I were texting each other. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The next morning, Maud sees Carol leaving and sees her counting money like she has been paid to be there for the night. And Maud, again, doesn't look happy. By this, but then Amanda calls Maud into her room to share breakfast with her and says, "Like, come, come in here, Maud. Like, let's have breakfast." Maud brings in her food and starts to say her prayer before eating. And Amanda kind of is smirking and looking at it, looking at her, and folds her hair, hands in prayer as well. And Maud sees this and looks pleased. And she says, dear God, thank you for bringing Amanda and I together. And for this meal, please bless Amanda's body, uh, which is in pain now, but has done so many beautiful, amazing things. And also bless her mind that is shrouded in darkness. Please reach out to her as you did to me. And after the prayer, she kind of shudders again with that same almost sexual (laughs) reaction. (laughs) Orgasmic Uh prayer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Amanda looks at her 
it like notices her doing this and says, is this, is it, do you feel him now? Because Maud had told her, like, I feel him and it feels basically warm and fuzzy and good. And Maud nods. She can't even speak, but she's nodding. And Amanda starts to act the same way and kind of looks equally um, kind of put under a spell. And Maud then is like wide eyed, like, oh, hell yeah, it's fucking working. Like, we're both feeling God within us. We are on the I'm on the right track here. I'm going to save this woman's soul. And and Amanda reaches over to her and says, I feel it, too. And they they hold hands and have this, like, again, very sexual in nature moment. <laughs> and um, later or the next day or sometime later, Amanda gifts Maud a book, a William Blake book of like religious paintings. And it inscribes in the in the cover, like for Maud, my savior with little angel wings around it. Do we get the impression that Amanda's faking it? Yeah. When she does I, that moment with Maud? I think so. I, t- I at this moment texted Jenna, this was a bad idea, Amanda. Don't indulge her. <laughs> yeah, don't indulge yeah, her. Amanda, this is making like, it so much worse. Is kind of a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're seeing kind of a montage moment of her looking through her new book of religious paintings and going through the daily routine her exercises that she has to do with amanda of them kind of stretching on the floor together and then we settle on maude with her book in the kitchen and she is looking at the the religious paintings and like practicing her prayer hands trying to exactly mirror the, the paintings in the book and as she's doing that, Carol walks in and startles her. Carol walks to the fridge, pulls out a bottle of champagne and um, opens it. It kind of explodes a bit, gets on her, gets on the floor. Maud, like, it seems irritated, hops up to start to try to clean it. Carol's like, I can clean it, Maud. Like, don't worry about it. Damn, I like got it all over my robe. She takes off her robe. So she's just in her bra and underwear. Maud looks mad about that, too. And <laughs> Maud says, don't don't let her drink very much of that it's not good for her to be drinking right now and carol's like don't worry it's mostly for me and grabs the bottle and goes into the room with amanda and maud eventually goes to kind of spy on them peeking through the crack and sees them making out and just stares at them for a long while looking upset and um eventually goes upstairs and goes to bed the next morning, she is hovering at the top of the staircase, waiting for the door to open uh, to Amanda's room. And the second Carol comes out of the door, she like runs down. And she's like, Carol, can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> and um, pulls Carol into the uh, kitchen, closes the door and is basically basically tells her you need to leave Amanda alone. You shouldn't see her anymore. And Carol says, did she tell you to say this to me? Did she put you up to this? And she says, no. And please don't tell her that I'm saying any of this. But she's um, she's fragile right now and she needs to focus on more important things. Um, th- there's like some big things happening with her right now that require her full attention. And she just oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> she just doesn't um, she doesn't have the time to to be spending with you and to be honest it seems like you don't even like her that much i saw the way you were looking at her last night it seems like you don't really even care about her carol looks very affronted and it's like of course i care about her and i don't think your clients your patients uh, personal life is any of your business and i don't think you can say anything and she says maude says i saw that she paid you i know she's paying you to see her and carol says again like none of your business and Maud says, I'm, tr- I was tr- I'm trying to be nice, but I just know that <laughs> this is a... Not doing a great job, Maud. <laughs> yeah, Maud. Maud is... You're being an asshole. Yeah. 
<laughs> and she says, you're just a, you're a waste of her time right now. And it's best if you just leave her alone. And Carol eventually says, OK, Maud, whatever you want. Fine. And Maud says, you'll do it. You'll leave her alone. She says, yep, anything you say. <laughs> and Maud says, I really appreciate it. Please don't tell her I put you up to this. Make something up. Don't hurt her feelings. Just let her down easy. And like, I really appreciate this. This is really for the best. Carol leaves. <laughs> Maud does a big few. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that definitely Maud. worked, Maud. I'm sure that worked 100% <laughs> effectively. Super great, super great choices. Yeah, Maud isn't like great with people. Mm-mm. I think I'm figuring, I'm figuring that out. No, um, not so much of like, a people person. Doesn't seem like she picks up on a lot of social signals. That's correct. Um, um so Maud is now feeling reinvigorated with her purpose she's going around the house drawing little crosses on the walls with water and says again in a prayer talking about how amanda's doing so well she radiates peace we don't need anyone but each other um she's thinking that we're really back on track to saving amanda's soul and she's she's happily walking into town one night see her smiling and then we hear katie 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 and a woman grabs her on the shoulder and she turns around and she says i thought that was you like how are you katie (gasps) she's like oh hi like you can tell she like doesn't want to be talking to this woman and this woman's name is joy and she is in a nurse's uniform and she says i haven't seen you in forever um, since for over a year, like, how are you? And Maud says, I'm, I'm doing, doing really well. Um, she says, what are you doing these days for work? And she says, I'm doing, uh, I'm a personal carer, private carer. And Joy looks kind of shocked at this and says, you're still, you're still nursing. And Maud looks offended at this and says, yeah, why? And she says, how did you get the job? And she says, through a, like a private agency. And Joy says, they, do they know what happened? And Maud says, yeah, yeah, they do. And she's like, okay, Um, well, that's great then. Good for you. And Maud kind of is uncomfortable and starts to try to walk away. And Joy calls after her and is like, wait, wait, uh, Katie, uh, take my phone number and like, let's catch up sometime, get drinks. Um, It would be nice to see you. And so uh, Maud slash Katie takes her number. So then back at Amanda's home, she gets a phone call and Maud is kind of eavesdropping. And we hear Amanda say, "Uh, hey, I wasn't expecting to hear from you today. And then you hear her say, what? Why? What do you mean? And that's all we hear of the phone call. And then we see... Amanda looks really upset and uh, Maud comes in to to start to, I don't know, give her dinner or something. And uh, Amanda just says, I'm, I want to go to bed. And she says, it's five o'clock. She says, I can go to bed whenever the hell I want. Like, put me in bed. So uh, Amanda looks really mad about something. And uh, so Maud... Uh, puts her to bed and then Maud is kind of like around the house looking really antsy and we see her in her bed kind of bouncing her knee up and down um eyes like shifting around like she's like maybe things aren't going as uh, according to plan as she wanted she gets up she goes to the kitchen she turns on the stove and she puts her hand right on the burner just for oh. like the top of her hand, just for a second, and then like screams and goes back to her room. <laughs> no. Okay. The next day, Amanda tells Maud to get her some stuff for the party tonight. We find out that this is Amanda's birthday and she's having a party. And sh- that, that night we see all of her friends come over 
and Maud ca- carries out the birthday cake to her. They all sing happy birthday. And Maud's looking hopeful again, like, okay, like we're so we, we're not totally off track here. Things are things could still be okay. And then in walks Carol. And they uh uh Amanda's like, Yay, Carol's here. They hug, they sit next to each other. Maud is pissed. And Maud is kind of keeping out of the part she's not talking to anyone she's kind of in the shadows and but she's she's right near amanda and carol and overhears someone say amanda how did you and carol meet and she says we met online and the other person says oh so you have a little menage a trois now and uh amanda says oh no maude doesn't like carol and she says, I can't tell why. I don't know if she's a bigot or if she's just jealous. And we see her turn and look right at Maud. Like she knows that Maud is within earshot. And then she, while looking at Maud says, so which is it? Do you think I'm indecent? And Maud says, you're not indecent. You're lost. And they all just kind of start laughing at Maud and think it's so funny as they uh, Amanda explains like oh she's like she's religious she's trying to save my soul it's sweet I guess and they're all kind of laughing some of the other guests are they like take a napkin and put it on her head like a little habit and Maud is obviously humiliated and upset and Amanda says, oh, you can't take anything I say seriously. Like, I'm just trying to get you to lighten up a bit. Like, you're so young. You're beautiful. Like, I don't know why you're so serious all the time. Like, you need to have a little bit of fun. And Maud says, I've got more important things on my mind. And Amanda says, oh, of course. Like, frivolous. How could mere human frivolity compare to the warm, like, warm embrace of the heavenly father up above? And Maud slaps her in the face really hard at this kind of making fun of God statement. And um, Amanda's nose starts bleeding. Everyone. Oh, shit. Like jumps back. And uh, then it cuts to uh, Maud in an office, seemingly the agency that she works for. And Maud says, if I could just talk to her. And the woman on the other side of the desk says, no, she doesn't, she doesn't want to talk to you. She, you should be happy that she's not pressing charges. And then we see Maud go back, move back into her little studio apartment, putting all her things back. She moves her crosses back. To, she's got like a little uh, set of drawers that she hangs a lot of crosses above. There's like 10 crosses. And she's now kind of cut out some paintings from the from the book she was given. So she has like a very just covered a wall covered in religious icons. <laughs> And she seems really depressed. She is, Maud is very upset that this has happened. Her, her righteous mission has been thwarted and she feels like a failure. Wow. And she's just going to sort of sit in that failure and take it well <laughs> and process and, it. And learn from and it and move grow forward. from mm-hmm. it mm-hmm. and move forward. Yes, yes, yes. Um, also, while, at, right after she slaps Amanda she keels over in pain she kind of folds over and starts like going like oh like something in her stomach is in pain um we see her in her bed in her apartment we see that she has scars on her stomach they don't look like medical scars oh self-inflicted perhaps it seems that way but i'm not positive and we hear her pr- a prayer again. She says, God, all I feel of you now is this pain. Maybe it's ulcers. Maybe it's cancer. If you're trying to teach me something, I can't see what it is. Quite frankly, it all seems like a waste. I was ready and open, and this is my reward. Unemployable, unoccupied. Perhaps you aren't as wise as I thought, or perhaps I wasn't paying enough attention. And while she's saying this, we see her tending to her hand her burned hand she has it gets like wrapped in a bandage she unwraps it it's a big open sore on the top of her hand and she just starts p- 
picking at it, like peeling, oh, peeling it off. No. Oh, it's so bad. <sighs> and she says, if this is how you treat your lo most loyal subjects, I shudder to think how you treat those that shun you. So she decides to go out and hit the town and she gets dressed up in very non mod like clothing. She's in a, a like a really low cut sparkly shirt and goes to a bar and is kind of looking around the the bar and makes eye contact with this guy. They kind of give each other a look, kind of nod their heads in a direction. And then we cut to her jerking him off in like a little, it's not even the bathroom, just a little corner area of the bar. <laughs> Out of sight, Whoa. out of sight, I guess. But she is just staring at his face. He's he's kind of looking. He he's not making eye contact with her, but she is uh, basically unblinking, staring at him while he while she's jerking him off. And he finishes. She wipes her hands off and just like storms out and goes back and sits down <laughs> in the bar. And he kind of looks like what the fuck, obviously. And oh my god, he then walks has to walk past her again to get back to his table he walks past her and is like uh have a, have a good night and goes and gets his friend and they leave oh, no. and she is then again looking around the bar kind of she's obviously alone and she looks at the table next to her is like a group of friends laughing and having a good time and she looks at them and starts kind of trying to laugh at their jokes and like maybe trying to insert herself into this circle of uh, friends and they notice her kind of leaning closer and laughing at the jokes like include me include me and oh god and they kind of all look at her like she's a freak and kind of turn their backs to her and she looks um rejected she starts taking shots. She's drinking um, a beer and she goes into a, like a little uh, hallway and calls Joy, the woman she ran into earlier and got her number mm. and says like, hey, um, I'm out. Uh, and my friends are about to leave. Um, I'm at this bar. If you want to come meet me and then we hear her say like oh oh great yeah like it would be so fun to see you actually i was a little surprised that you gave me your number i kind of thought you never really liked me and then her tone shifts and she's like well no i mean don't be like that like i didn't mean it and she's like no i mean oh yeah no if you can't if you can't come oh, yeah that's fine that's fine like we'll do it another time hangs up reject it again and we see her kind of getting drunker and drunker. She's at the bar looking down at her beer and it starts to have like a whirlpool in it, like a little um, funnel, tor funnel. tornado-y looking thing. And it frightens her. She jumps back. The glass smashes and kind of the other, other people at the bar stand up to to help her she bumps into another table they're like are you okay she puts her hands on their table there's like six pints of beer on the table this funneling thing is happening in all of them she gets very wide-eyed looking at it all um and turns to leave and smashes into a, a, a guy that's carrying a beer and it uh she knocks it out of his hand and he like laughs and is like i think you owe me a beer cut to them having sex she mod is on top um very uh aggressively like very having very fast sex with him and her hands are kind of on his chest and as she is thrusting it's cutting back and forth between we see um an old woman with a, a ventilator on that she is giving CPR to. And it's the woman from the from the opening scene that we saw a, a patient of hers had died. And it's cutting um, back and forth. She, you could see she's starting to get like nervous. And 
as her hands are on his chest, they smash through his like rib cage, his whole chest caves in and like blood comes out of his mouth and she what? she jumps back screaming and it didn't happen but we put together that that's what happened to the woman that died the patient oh that's awful. so she was desperately trying to save this woman and caved crushed her chest while giving her cpr holy fucking oh. shit that's distressing and oh, it's really oh, no no it's very upsetting and she like she uh, throws herself back and is screaming and he like jumps up he's he's fine it didn't happen and um uh he's like it's what's what's wrong it's okay it's okay like nothing happened and she's like not saying anything she's just looking like uh, panicked and um and he immediately starts having sex with her again and she says like no Ugh. And he doesn't stop and like just starts having sex with her and she just is quiet and like lets him finish. Oh, it's really awful. Gross. And then um after he finishes, he lights up a cigarette and she is like just like quite like quietly getting dressed and he says, I remember you, you know, you used to go out around here all the time. Like you fucked my friend Tommy. And like I remember you like a sexy little nursey girl. And she gets dressed, leaves. He's like laughing at her a bit. Ew. And she walks home. She stumbles home. She's pretty drunk. And the 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 camera movement is like rotating around this alleyway. It's really cool. The music and the cinematography here are so fucking cool. She's like going home. This is a very rock bottomy moment. And she gets back to her apartment and she's um, crying and she says, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, please. Like, I'll do anything. Please just come to me. Come to me, God. Like, I'll do anything. And at that moment, she projectile vomits like across the room and the music like crescendos into this loud like droning sounds and fireworks start going off outside and so the light is all cool <laughs> and ooh, i've got chills just thinking about it um <sighs> and she her eyes get wide like looking at the fireworks she like falls to the falls to the ground and starts having what looks like a seizure she's like foaming at the mouth the music is is really intense the fireworks are going off she's like grabbing her face and she's having this like like orgasmic seizure where she looks like have she's in pain her her hands are kind of bending at weird little angles um and then it goes completely silent and she floats off the ground and she's hovering in the air in the middle of her apartment and like slow motion fireworks are like going off behind and like it's like changing from like reds to blues and it's very cool <laughs> and then it cuts to the next morning and she's like cleaning her messy apartment she had let it get pretty messy because she was um her faith was tested and she was feeling not not good but her her faith is restored she's cleaning her apartment she's like on her hands and knees scrubbing like the little corners of her apartment she's like um um yeah, got a, a new energy and she's throwing out her her party clothes. She I think she burnt oh, she, there we she go. burns them in the sink. <laughs> Great. And she, then we hear her prayer, revelation and just in time. Oh Lord, your mercy knows no bounds and for shame that I almost fell so easily. And we see her Put a pin in a little postcard that she's cut into the shape of a, the sole of a foot, <laughs> sole of a shoe. And she puts a bunch of little, I guess, uh, push oh, pins no. into a little thing that uh, she then puts into her shoe. And so it's, I don't know, four, 40 Ugh. push pins in this thing. So she's essentially w would be walking on nails type thing she slides them into her shoes uh. and uh 
she looks as she she's got her like feet ready to go into them. I'm like trying to find a way to make my brain not picture it as you're saying it. I'm like, how do I get my brain to not think about this? How do I get my brain to not see what you're saying? It's tough. I don't know how. Uh, And as she's about to slide her feet in, she looks up at her little prayer altar wall with all the crosses. Kind of looks like she gets this strength and motivation from it. She's smiling and she jumps into the shoes. (gasps) Oh! And lets oh, no. out a big scream and then cut to her walking down the boardwalk along the pier. She looks like she is in this little trance again. She, her, she's smiling. Um, we get a close up of her, her feet stepping with each step. So she is just walking with pins in her feet and looks very happy about it. And she says, I should have expected resistance. Nothing worthwhile comes easily. And we see that she is spying on Amanda. We see the new carer uh, taking her outside. And um, they're kind of laughing, looking at the ocean. And Maud is watching them from the distance and says, Amanda, 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 you called to me. It meant something. Oh, no. And she says, never waste your pain. Never waste your pain. And then (laughs) uh, she waits out on uh, the pier and uh, or finds, I guess, Amanda's new carer having a lunch break or something on the pier, eating a sandwich, kind of overlooking the water. And Maude walks up next to her and is like, oh, beautiful day, isn't it? Like, mind if I sit next to you and goes and sits down next to this woman. Her, Her name is Esther. She says she notices her uniform and says, oh, do you work at this hospital? And she says, oh, no, I'm actually a private carer. And she says, oh, like, who are you caring for right now? And she's like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not allowed to say, but it's a it's a it's a woman. And she's really she's great. And we have a great connection. And Maude says, I think healthcare workers are it's like the most noble profession. And I think like you're doing such important work. And the Esther looks flattered by this. She's like, oh, thank you so much. Like, yeah, it's a little it's, it can be thankless at times, but it's also really rewarding. And the the woman that I'm with now is uh, I mean, she's probably unfortunately, like not long for this world. I think I probably won't be with her much longer. But that's the way the cookie crumbles, as they say. And this kind of insensitive remark looks like it really pisses Maude off. And um, Esther turns to her and says, like, I'm Esther, by the way. Like, what's your name? And Maude just stands up and walks away, like, really fast, like she's pissed. And Esther's like, okay. (laughs) Okay. Probably never see her again. (laughs) So she, she, Maude walks back home and we hear her, her voiceover saying, what if I'm getting it all wrong? What if you're smirking? What if you're indifferent? What if you think me a clueless idiot? And a cockroach crawls out of her sink that looks very similar to the cockroach from the beginning. I guess these are British cockroaches. They look different to American cockroaches. They're kind of round, oh. rounder. <laughs> and um, it crawls out of her sink and toward her altar. And she watches it. And as it gets to the base of the altar, a kind of wave moves over the altar, like something, some little effect happens that she notices. And she she walks up closer to it and is is looking at it kind of expectant. And then we hear a voice speak to her from the wall. And it's not in English. It's in Welsh. And it says... My child, the hour draws near. Soon you will join the great embrace. You've known for some time that this world is just a game. Your life, childhood, mom, dad. You could feel there was something more. All you've yearned for is to touch it. I am proud of how far you've come. Take on this last test and we will be together, truly. And she says, what, how will I know what to do? And they respond, you've always known. And she looks just so thrilled and pumped 
God spoke to her and she's got to do some final test. She goes and sits uh, in her bed. We see that she's like not really sleeping. She's too excited. But the next morning she gets up and takes um, the sheet off of her bed and kind of drapes it over herself like a like a robe that a priest would wear or that a saint would wear, I suppose, and puts on her big cross necklace and is kind of admiring herself in the mirror. Like, look at me. I'm a saint. (laughs) (laughs) And we see her go to the sink and fill it with water and fill a, a water bottle with that water and she's doing a blessing over it and making a little cross over it and this is like what we talked about recently when we did our demon bonus episode we found out that any water can be holy water (laughs) you just have to believe you just have to believe you just have to believe (laughs) she She believes i I would say she's a candidate for a believer (laughs) and um we see also on her sink counter there is hydrogen peroxide, acetone, like various chemicals. Getting a lot of close-ups of like flammable, of like little scroll and skull and bones, like don't ingest. Poison. Yeah, poison. And uh, there's a knock on the door. And she's looking, um, Maud is looking a little wilder than normal. She's getting circles under her eyes because it seems like she's not sleeping. She is in um just a tank top and underwear at this moment and she goes and opens the door and it's joy and joy's kind of kind of sees that she's in her underwear like, oh i'm sorry did i did i wake you mod says no mod's being more weird than normal here she's not really she's not talking a lot she's moving slowly and carefully so joy she she lets joy in she says no it's fine come in Oh, don't go in, Joy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> don't do it. Joy puts her stuff down and basically says, like, I, I, I felt bad about the other day um, that I responded the way I did to you being a nurse again. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you were always so good. And like, what happened wasn't your fault. And everybody knows that. And I hope you know that. Like, you're always really hard on yourself. And I just wanted to come over and you know make sure that you were okay Maud like slowly as walks over to a, a window in her apartment we see her kind of eyeing the acetone she's like looking at it little cogs are turning in her head she walks over to the window and is looking out and we see that her one of her eyes has changed color she now has one blue eye and one brown eye and she looks up at the kind of weather vane of the opposite building that's kind of in the shape of a cross and above it the clouds are kind of whirling and again like a little vortexy thing and she looks at it she's starting to like completely tune out whatever uh joy is saying she's in a, a again another trance and um eventually turns around and walks to Joy and puts her hands on her cheeks and kisses her on the cheek and says, thank you for coming, Joy. And Joy's kind of like, yeah, I mean, we're, we're worried about you and I just want to make sure that everything's okay. Like, I'm here for you if you need anything. And Maud says, I know that after that happened, like, I was a bit of a mess for a while, but I'm... Tran- I am I am transformed and soon everyone will see. And Joy says, oh, that's great. Hey, that's <laughs> so good. Cool. What a normal thing to hear. <laughs> and I love it for you. And then Maud says, like, thank you for stopping by. Like, I'll see you later. And Joy's like, oh, OK, yeah, I, I should. I should get going. And she ushers yes, her you should, Joy. You ushers her out, closes the door behind her. Then we see kind of shots of her holy water, her acetone, and she gets dressed back up in her sheet with her cross necklace and heads out. 
<laughs> Shuts out. <laughs> ready, to, go. ready to hit the city. <laughs> and she walks to Amanda's and hides in the bushes. Okay. And we see Esther leave the house for the night. And Maud strolls right in and finds Amanda laying in her bed. She looks worse than before. Her condition seems to be worsening. And so Amanda doesn't react too much to seeing Maud. Um, And Maud comes and and sits by her bedside. And Amanda says, I'm sorry I was unkind to you. Maud says, it's okay. It's okay. The Lord forgives. The Lord always forgives. All you have to do is ask. And... She tries to put little a little holy water cross on um, Amanda's forehead. Amanda kind of pushes away and he's like, oh, like, oh, this God stuff. Like, no, stop. And I'm like, none of, or she says, none of that nonsense and pushes her off. Maud looks um, upset and uh, Amanda looks at her and says, you must be the loneliest girl I've ever seen. And... Maud looks at her and says, I'm not alone, and neither are you. And Amanda says, okay, snap out of it, honey. He isn't real. Like, surely you must know that. Like, God's not real. And, oh, man. And Maud looks taken aback and kind of hurt by this statement. And Amanda says, when we die, that's it. Like, we go in the, our bodies go in the ground. And we rot and that's it. And I like hate to be the one to break it to you. Like there's nothing else. Like this is it. And she, Maud says, no, I like, I saw you. You felt him too. You felt him too. Oh no. Oh no. And Amanda kind of laughs and is like, no, I didn't. I was like, you don't understand how boring it is when you're dying. Like I just like was trying to have a little fun. I was just messing with you because I was bored. And Ma, and yeah, and then again is like, and like, yeah, and I'm going to die and that's going to be it. One day you're going to die. That's going to be it. There's nothing else. There's nothing here but you and me. And Maud kind of like leans back and like looks very upset. And then we hear Amanda's voice kind of change, get a little deeper. And she says, well, that was easy. And Maud looks up at her and Amanda's face lengthens, it elongates and her mouth like drops open and she like roars at Maud. looks like oh, a no. demon. Oh. And uh, Maud jumps up and screams and grabs like a glass off the nightstand, smashes it on her. And we hear amanda laughing like a <laughs> like a little demon laugh <laughs> and and you hear Maud say devil and oh my god and in this very deep creepy voice we hear amanda amanda's like moving towards Maud now in this very inhuman way her limbs look like they're getting a little longer she's kind of crawling and she says take some responsibility for your actions you are here because you are alone if you were a true believer he would be enough but it's clear now that you are as weak as your faith and it, Maud f- gets flung back across the room, smashes into a vanity, all the like glass shatters. And um, as she's getting up, she sees a pair of scissors. She grabs them and she lunges at Amanda and stabs her so many times in the chest. Just pop, 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 pop. <laughs> There's blood oh, squirting Jesus. all up. And you hear kind of... Uh, demon eating growl moans like <laughs> and then amanda dies and they cut to her just a, a, a normal looking amanda dead in the bed with scissors coming out of her neck just kind of yeah. and maud is covered in blood now in her in her little sheet robe and she basically looks like like pure ecstasy she basically floats out of the house it's filmed in a way to make it look like she's kind of floating out of the house but she's just walking 
straight out of the house, smiling, thinking she's just killed Satan, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. She she gets back to ho- back home, washes off all the blood, lays in her bed again. But we see her like eyes never close. Then it becomes the next morning. She gets up and grabs a, a fresh sheet to wrap mm. around herself, gets mm-hmm. dressed again and notices, looks back and sees that she has glowing angel wings. And she takes this moment in. She has gotten her wings. Oh, she feels so good. So great. <laughs> Everything went according to plan. And she grabs a little plastic bag. We see her walk out the door and down the boardwalk towards the beach. And she looks up. The The sky is kind of swirling again. That same effect looks like it's almost like a portal up to heaven, perhaps. And mm. people are w- walking by her looking like, what the fuck is this girl doing? She's getting some... Uh, stairs she walks right to the center of the beach it's a pretty crowded beach and sets down her little plastic bag and we see that it is the acetone and she starts kind of singing to herself she looks um very happy very peaceful and she pulls the acetone out opens it up it's a big jug pours it all over her head all over herself Someone notices, and you see people on the beach kind of turning to look at her, and she pulls out a lighter. Oh, God. And you hear someone yell, like, somebody stop her, somebody stop her, and we see her light the lighter, and she goes up and, like, she glows. It's like this slow motion effect of, like, flames are maybe glowing. She's smiling. And we pan out and see everyone on the beach kneeling toward her, like bowing toward her. Oh, my God. And she has her angel wings again, and she's just surrounded in light. And then it cuts to reality, her burning alive (laughs) and screaming. And that's the end of the movie. Oh, my my God. God. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) What the fuck? It was crazy. Whoa. Whoa. That was fucking wild. Okay. So, so many, so many thoughts and feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, what a journey. What a freaking journey. Obviously, this is a story about a woman who is dealing with some very severe yeah. trauma and guilt. Yeah. And trying to reconcile it and seems to be unable to. Right. And this is the only way she seems to be able to. And damn, it goes pretty haywire, I would say. Yeah. Really I mean, it. she is having a, a a mental health emergency. Emergency. And has nobody. And yeah, that's what one of the reviews I read is it's like an exploration of like complete loneliness and taking religion too literally. Wow. Well, it's like when you feel clearly she was in so much emotional pain and mm-hmm. so much emotional distress. And it's so interesting that she was able to like find something within herself to counteract it like she was she was able to meet it on the other side of the spectrum with this like you know her orgasmic reactions to god and then the final scene of her lighting herself on fire i mean it's like every moment of pain was met by an equal moment of like quote-unquote pleasure right Mm. right fucking crazy what does she say? Don't let your pain go to waste or something like that. Never waste yeah. your pain. Never waste your pain. Mm. But the like vulnerability you feel mm. in, in certain times and it kind of reminded me of like a, a lot of things, like a lot of things prey on that vulnerability and wanting to have a community and mm-hmm. not that like anybody, any particular person was preying on her, but it is this like desire to have a community or feel like you're part of something bigger And there's so much in life like that's I feel like conspiracy theories are like that. Um, Cults are like that. (laughs) 
and it's very scary like being completely alone is a very scary thing and very scary i thought this did a very good job exploring that yeah clearly she was a human being that probably struggled to fit in before she had this extremely traumatic event happen yeah Yeah. she's how she ended up so lonely in addition to having something awful like accidentally killing someone that you're trying to save in such a brutal way i mean like social rejection is one of the most painful things yeah. human beings can that, experience the mm-hmm. scene where she's like laughing to try to get an invitation to join the group next to her was i f- feel like one of the most heartbreaking parts cuz she's just like mm. desperate for someone to notice her and mm-hmm. nobody will I mean, Joy was trying. Joy was reaching out a bit of Ugh. an olive branch, but it was a little too, too little, too late. Yeah, it's it's really wild for like a year after you know that that happened to this woman to be like, by the way, we none of us thought it was your fault. Right. Like, yeah, a year has passed. It's too far gone. Yeah. Not that it's Joy's responsibility, but it is. Yeah. It's such a reminder of like. This that is not the moment to have. Done yeah. It. Uh, one detail that is very cool that I um, I read an interview with Rose Glass is that God's voice, the Welsh voice, is... Matthew Reese. <laughs> oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> no, it's Morpeth Clark, and it's just her voice pitched way down, which oh. I love. Oh, that's cool. Because it's obviously, it's her. I mean, it's in her head that it's happening, and so it's yeah. like... It's all her. What a clever idea to actually make the voice also be her. Yeah, I like that. That was really, really brutal. Dang. Pretty damn good, though. I oh, I love it. I watched it again today I, I, to take notes, but I was like, I'm just going to watch it again because it was wow. good. I really want to read more interviews with Rose Glass and see yeah. what else she has to say about it and like what the inspiration behind this was or like why she felt like she needed to make a movie like this. I mean, what her experience yeah, with religion has been. Yeah, I do believe that she was raised Christian and there are definitely interviews about that with her, but I don't remember enough to 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 say more about it. But um, yeah, I think that's fascinating, too. Goodness. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious. What a what a ride. What a what freaking a ride. ride. Samantha, thank you. You've done it again. <laughs> You've done it again. You've done it again. Hey, happy to do it. It was really was good. Really excited for this one. And mm. any listeners out there who can stomach it and who can spare those 99 cents mm-hmm. to get two months of epics. Oh, God, we're always freaking plugging places that don't sponsor us yeah (laughs) Yeah, for real (laughs) but it's worth it i think and i would highly recommend watching it because the performances are great it's directed so well the music's so great the cinematography is great everything's great editing everything's great everything's great 10 out of 10 from that's a 10 10 out of 10 for me wow oh oh boy oh boy wow should we do a welsh god accent to say goodbye yep we we know how to we do that. Sh- we definitely <laughs> should. I will also just say quickly before we close. Yes. Listeners, this comes out on Wednesday, February 17th. Today, mm-hmm. presumably, <laughs> if you're listening, is Wednesday, February 17th. Um, On Saturday, February 20th, you're going to want to mm. get Discovery Plus. They do have a free trial. Yes. Uh, and you're going to want to watch Attack of the Murder Hornets. Thank you, Emily. Edited by our one, she did it again, Samantha Smart. I did my best. You're going to want to fucking watch that movie. Those are your Saturday night plans, baby. Oh, uh, it looks this so Saturday. good. Can't tell us. P- share with us when you're watching it. We want to see. Yeah, that would be really cool. It'd Listeners, be so tell, cool. tell me your thoughts. I worked very hard on it, and I think it's she fun. Worked so hard. We kind of leaned into some horror-y themes or tropes or devices, just a little bit. I mean, it's a little tongue-in-cheek. It's silly, but it's also informative and fun. And I had. I'm I'm very proud of it. So I would love it if people Yay. watched it. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so excited. Well, there you go, listeners. You've got your freaking Saturday night plans. The Saturday night plans. Mm-hmm. Um uh, and yeah, without further ado, here's our Welsh god. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> 
Oh. What even is Welsh? Just more British? I have no idea. I don't I I really don't know. Good. I didn't boy. practice enough. Good, Good boy. boy. Good, Good boy. boy. It's just an it's completely random. Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> we nailed it. Good nailed boy. It. Good boy. Boy. Hi friends, Emily here. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of Too Scary Didn't Watch. If you like the show, please rate and review. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. You can follow us on social media at TSDW Podcast on Instagram and Twitter. Become a patron at patreon.com slash DSW podcast. Uh, members of Tony fucking Colette's inner circle get some bonus episodes too every month. And that's just the beginning of it. Uh, and of course, remember to check out Attack of the Murder Hornets on Discovery Plus on Saturday, February 20th, edited by our dear Samantha. It is amazing. You're going to love it. And we will see you right back here next week. We love you so much. Bye. Bye.